In this tutorial, you will learn how to use chi-squared, and specifically in geography. Um, geography is all about looking at spatial patterns, and chi-squared is really good for investigating these types of patterns. And it's also useful um, when you can put your data that you've collected out in the field into categories. So I've put three examples here of when chi-squared can be used. Does bed load size change along a river's course? Does beach material roundness differ from one end of a beach to another? And does ethnicity vary spatially in different wards of a town? If you want to statistically prove these to be correct or not, chi-squared can help. So let's just look briefly at how chi-squared works. Um, it compares your fieldwork data that you've collected out in the field against what we call a theoretical random distribution. Now, if your data that you've collected in the field differs from this random distribution, then you can categorically say that your data shows a spatial pattern. And I'm going to give an example of how this works. So let's say you've gone to a beach and you've collected beach material data. Your fieldwork data that you've collected using a quadrat and a pair of calipers is called the observed data and you would record this on your clipboard and recording sheet. The theoretical random data, which you're going to compare your data against, is called the expected data. So let's go to North Yorkshire and investigate this particular beach in Selix Bay. And our investigation is simply this. Is there a difference in beach material size between the north and the south end of Selix Bay? So you collect beach material data and you want to see if there's a difference in size. You've got spatial pattern and you've got categories. Chi-squared will help you work out if there is a difference. So the first thing you do is you state the null hypothesis as you do with any statistical test. And our null hypothesis is this. There is no significant difference between beach material size in Selix Bay. And then we state the alternative hypothesis. There is a significant difference between beach material size in Selix Bay. So now let's go off on our field trip to North Yorkshire and we go to Selix Bay. Uh, let's start off in the south end of the beach. And in this area here, we're going to put down 13 quadrats and we discover that three of our quadrats have very fine sand as the majority of beach material, seven have coarse sand granules, and three have small pebbles to boulders. We then go off to the north end of the beach, and in this area here we put down 13 quadrats, and there is one quadrat only with very fine sand, two with coarse sand granules, and we have 10 which have small pebbles to boulders. And this is your observed data, your raw data. And you might look at that data and think, well, actually, yeah, I can see that the south end of the beach has very different beach material to the north. Chi-squared will help you to statistically prove this. So here is the chi-squared formula. I'm not going to dwell on this. I'm just going to show you how to use it. And with chi-squared, you need to calculate the expected value before we can do the calculation. Uh, so to do this, you need to create a table. And the first column of your table is called the category. And then you'll have your sites. Um, I've only got two sites, site one and site two. So I'm going to ignore this column here. And then we can start to um, enter our results from our field work. So if we recall very fine sand, 
we had 3, 7 and 3, and 1, 2 and 10. Now what we need to do is we need to calculate column totals and row totals. So we add up 3, 7 and 3 to give 13, 1, 2 and 10 gives 13, and then our row totals here, 3 and 1 is 4, 7 and 2, 9, 3 and 10, 13, and our row total should be the same as our column total, and indeed it is, 26. So the next stage is to input the information from the top table that we've just completed into this main table below so that we can calculate our theoretical random distribution which is known as the expected value. The first thing we do is we simply insert our observed data into the first column. Um, so I'm simply going to move the 3 into here and then the 1 and then the 7 and so on. The next step is to complete the expected column and to do this we need to do a simple calculation of row total times column total divided by total gives us expected and this is this is how we do it. Uh, let's look at observed value 3 to begin with. Our observed value 3, our row total is 4 times our column total for 3, which is 13, divided by our total, which is 26, gives us an answer of 2. Now let's do the same for our observed data 1. Our observed data 1 here, the row total is 4 times the column total, which is 13, divided by the total of 26, gives us an answer also of 2. And we continue to fill this data in working it out so now I'm going to tell you how to fill in the rest of the um, first row here so we're going to be filling in these boxes here um, very simply the O minus E is, is the observed minus the expected so in this case 3 take away 2 is 1, and then we square it to get rid of any negative numbers, and then um, O minus E squared divided by the expected, so this time we're looking at 1 divided by 2, gives us an answer of 0 0.5. And I'll just do one more row for you. Um, so we're looking at um, this row here. So O minus E, 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Uh, 1 min minus 1 squared gives you 1. And then O minus E squared divided by E, <coughs> or 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5. And you would continue to fill in the table for the rest of the rows. So here is our completed table and the final thing we need to do is to add up this final column here which will give us our chi-squared value and it comes to 7.545 and what does this number mean? Well not much. Uh, we need to consult a significance table in order to reject or accept our null hypothesis. So here is our significance table for chi-squared. Here's our 
result at the top so we don't forget. First thing we do is look at the degrees of freedom and we need to work this out. And for chi-squared, the degrees of freedom is the number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. And if we remember how many rows we had from our fieldwork data, uh, we had fine sand, the coarse sand and the small pebbles. So that's three rows, take away one, times the number of columns. We had site one and we had site two. So we had two take away one. And that gives us a total of two times one. And so degrees of freedom is two, which when we look at our table is here. If our chi-squared answer is more than this value here, the 5% significance value, we can be 95% sure that our result is not due to chance. And that means we can reject our null hypothesis. Now, unfortunately, our result is not greater than this number here which would have given us a 99% confidence level. Our result was not due to chance, um, but it doesn't matter. We can still be 95% certain, and therefore we can reject our null hypothesis. So let's return to our null hypothesis, uh, which we can now reject, and therefore we can accept the alternative hypothesis there is a significant difference between beach material size in Selix Bay. And because we were looking at differences between the north and the south end of the beach and beach material size, we can categorically say that beach material, the size of it does differ. And we have statistically proven that with chi-squared. It's rather a long video to explain chi-squared, but I hope if you've watched it and have followed it stage by stage, um, you will now be able to apply it to your own investigation.